Welcome to Straits Talk, a podcast of Straits Interactive, where we talk about the value, risks and constraints of data protection, data governance and generative AI. I'm tech writer Grace Chung, and with me today are the Straits Interactive founders, Kevin Shepherdson, founder and CEO, and Elvin Toll, co-founder of Straits Interactive. So, um, it has been in- interesting uh, about the kinds of jobs that will be created and lost with uh, Gen AI. Now, a lot of the tech companies uh, have let many staff go. I think there have been recent reports of retrenchments. But I think this is a uh, question of, it's an issue of uh, right-sizing. They hired too many people during COVID, uh, and now they're just right-sizing the company, not because they are replacing the workers with technology. Yeah. What do you think? And that's a big misunderstanding that we are seeing, right? Mm-hmm. Because they are looking at these companies and say, hey, this guy's got AI. And mm-hmm. at the same time, because the AI is doing so pretty so well, and that downsizing has happened, and uh, that creates the wrong perception. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the flawed thinking here that um, your jobs are being replaced. So the point actually we want to make is all these cost-cutting measures will happen with or without um, AI, right? Because some of these companies, they hired, they hired so fast, um, they wanted to build a whole bunch of resources. In the end, they realized that the bottom line actually matters. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, um we are in this situation where management say, I can use AI for productivity. I can use AI as a game changer. I can open new revenue uh, channels. and But at the same time, it can increase my productivity. Then this worker on the other side is saying, oh, increase productivity, are they going to replace me? So this tension, uh, is that good or bad? And, and uh, from the worker's perspective, what should they do? Yeah, I mean, we can empathize with the fact that when you see an app that suddenly can write a blog article, oh. you know, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. And we covered that in the previous episode, the 10 value areas, right? But if you don't understand how the technology works, you're now a passive recipient and you look at it, oh dear, you say to yourself, um, I am going to be replaced, yeah? But this is where um, the job reskilling actually come in. Mm. Now, not many people know that today behind every app, that you're seeing the market is actually what we call prompts. They are all instructions yeah. that you give in simple English language that you send to the large language model. So the good news is anyone can learn it. And the ironic part of it is we can all do a better job than the programmer. No disrespect to the programmer because the programmers will still do their jobs in writing the code, doing the function calls, the APIs and all of that. But the specific instructions can be written by anyone. So if you are a worker here and you're feeling um, threatened by the technology, um, what if you could write the tasks, you could write your prompts and get the application to do it for you. So now you suddenly feel a sense of control. And that's what we did in Straits, right? We created our Capabara platform uh, and a bunch of what we call capability tools. All you need to do is to take your ChatGPT prompts and store them in the application in the same way that all applications actually work. So I guess my takeaway message here is um, in order for you to feel in control, learn how to do your prompt designs. So prompt designing, prompt writing, uh, Elvin, is one way of augmentation, right, on your work, right? Can you talk more about this? Yeah, so if I quote an example of this particular company who actually was uh, very much in content writing they were an agency and they actually published the economics difference uh, before AI and after AI mm. before AI and after AI the difference in productive fee was 10x the cost dropped by 5x so you multiply that as significant so what was the difference they point out five different areas that the writers did strategy research writing okay Distribution optimization. Right. Okay. Before AI, a lot of it was on writing. After AI, writing will come very fast with the AI. But more 
was done on the research and strategy, which is more value added. So in prompt writing, it's the same. You need to have what is your job that you know how to do well. The guy will know how the strategy, okay, what makes a good output. is able to then prompt it to get the kind of output, even in the researching, right? You need this kind of person to write the right prompts, right? And we'll train it to say, okay, I need it this way, this kind of output, and help you in the research. Therein lies as well, you mentioned this now, creating assistance. It won't be just one chat GPT you're talking to. We're going to see a rise of multiple assistants that you're going to train. One assistant could be doing research, right? One research applies to him the strategy, right? But it's your thinking, but the writing one, you really give it a certain problem, the way it writes, you want to write a blog, write a tweet, right? right. You probably have three assistants, one doing social media, one doing long time, right. one doing right. video. And that's what we will see, where you will suddenly have very cost-effective assistance, where you do more of the thinking, but you have AI who already been programmed, maybe three assistants doing three different forms of outputs for you. Yeah. Can, can I chip in here? Yeah. Because I was thinking that uh, you see a difference in thinking from the uh, person, the, the worker, and the management team, right? Um, so going back to what you just said, for the worker, that, that skill is already naturally arising because you are learning how to use ChatGPT, yeah? And so what Straits did was um, we made a controversial decision to allow everyone to use the free version of ChatGPT, but we actually put a policy in place. And what we did was we actually measured 42 processes across the organization. Yeah, we asked every single department to record the before and the after in terms of using ChatGPT and how many minutes that you have actually saved. So after monitoring it, I was surprised, and this is now from a management's perspective, we actually saved 26 hours of free time. Yeah, about 62 percent improvement of produ productivity in terms of time savings. So if we use that perspective, people are thinking, oh dear, um, my jobs will be displaced. But from the management perspective, we're thinking, hmm, with that 26 uh, hours free, what else can we get the staff to do? So that's one day extra, or two days extra. Exactly. Yeah. So now uh, instead of replacing someone, we say, okay, now do I make the organization more productive, right? So. Um, before we jump to conclusion, thinking that AI will replace the jobs, you also need to look at the nature of the organization because the management team will want you to be more productivity, productive. And this is a time where we can actually improve our skills uh, and add more value to the organization versus going to one corner and then, you know, um, crying, say, oh, my job will be replaced. Do you need technical skills to upgrade yourself? Because reskilling is obviously very important in this uh, new generation. Yeah, I think doing just even writing chat GPT, right? Talking to it in, in natural language, in the right. English. In fact, it's not even necessarily English. Mm. Vietnamese are using it in Vietnamese, right? Okay. So right now, the art of prompting to get a high output is non-technical, right? Once you go to multi-modality or this thing, maybe you need to know how to integrate certain things. But right now, it's so simple. There's text to video. We just talk right. to it. I like this video, I want it in a girl, I want this color, I want it in this background. Boom. Even Adobe is doing that right now. Right. So we see the creation part of it, the programming of it is actually natural language. So it need not be technical. But however, what you need is mental rigor. Because you can't prompt it with cause zero short prompt. Give me this, give me that. You gotta be like quite specific in the way you instruct like earlier talk about unlimited. You do you need to be more imaginative, more creative? more creative, more descriptive, mm. as if you're just printing a, a, a child or intern, okay. right? Mm. So in a way, you have to be more rigorous mentally as well mm. to describe the process so to get what you want. Mm. And then you need to be more dexterous because you're just jumping in multi modalities as well. So okay. I think that is a good skill set to upgrade a person rather than just the doing. They're doing more thinking so they can instruct better um, outputs, right? Or processing from the LLM themselves or whatever application that's AI enabled. What were your thoughts? See, the perception today, when you say AI, immediately the guy freezes and, and he associates AI, even Gen AI with the data scientist, mm. the AI programmer. Right. And I guess a lot of it is what we read in the papers, right? We think that this is something beyond our reach. And as what uh, Alvin was saying, uh, sometimes the skill is as easy as just giving clear instructions. 
So in my in in from my perspective, um, anyone good in language, yeah, would now have the ability to use AI. Anyone with domain expertise can actually apply it. I think this is one part that we will need to change the perception, and that's where uh, first trades we believe that a new emergence of a segment called the AI business professional, mm -hmm. someone who knows how to create value, mm -hmm. someone who knows how to do due diligence, mm -hmm. and also implement AI ethically and responsibly. And that's the good news for everyone, right, right? Right. So that's why you have a good course that's coming out, already started, called the Advanced Certification in Gen AI Governance, right? So it'll teach you some of these things. But looking at it from a um, management perspective, what are the kind of courses you can send this, your workers to, you know, because it's quite ill, right? Yeah. I think this is where I'm very passionate about it. Um, we worked with SMU as opposed to going deep into a topic like AI governance. We worked with SMU to create a, a whole entire advanced certificate in generative AI ethics and data protection. And that's where we wrote six modules. And if you remember, we talked about the value of generative AI. So we wrote the modules in a way that we covered different areas, right? One is the practical approach telling you how to use Gen AI. So anyone can send their stuff to it. And then when you get excited, then you can learn about prompt engineering. And then we go into specific areas of HR, business productivity, digital marketing, learning and management and all of that, right? So if you take the entire course, then you get the advanced cert. But if you want, you can just take specific areas. And this course has been doing pretty well because we thought it'd be a good idea to actually embed AI into the curriculum, right? So we always go for courses that tells us that uh, this course is about AI, but they never use the AI tools as part of the hands-on exercise. So that's one uniqueness. And I think companies can benefit not just from going from a theoretical perspective, but also going from a hands-on perspective. Right. So from a worker's perspective, it is important to know, hey, I will not lose my job to AI. In fact, it can augment my job and make me a more useful worker for a company right? and from the company's perspective think about how you can this extra hours saved from using AI how I can give more work more tasks to the work well thank you for listening to us for this episode on Straits Talk